Hello and welcome to St. Petersburg at a fascinating time for Russia. We're just a few months away from parliamentary and presidential elections which are going to help shape the future of the country for at least the next six years. I'm delighted to be joined by the President of the Russian Federation, Dmitry Medvedev. Mr. President, welcome. The first question is not the most original one, but I think the whole world is waiting for a reply to it. Uh, would you like to stand for a second term as president next year? Well, this is not a very original question, I should say. This is like a game of sorts already. Uh, people ask this question and they understand what kind of answer they're going to get to it. Quite evident answer. I would like to say you one thing. I think that any leader who uh, occupies such a post as a president must want to run. But another question is whether he is going to decide whether he's going to run for presidency or not. So his decision is somewhat different from his willingness to run. So this is my answer. But everything else I've just said at the panel session where I asked people to be patient for a little while to keep up the intrigue and suspense. That will be more interesting. But don't you need a second term in order to complete the program that you've announced? It's a very ambitious economic reform program. Thank you very much for a high evaluation of my program. It's very flattering to hear. But the second term is not what I need. The people must provide an answer to this one. They define whether they want to see this person or not. And as an acting politician, I will be guided by that in taking my decision. I think that we will have very, not very long to wait. And I think that the decision will be correct, both for the Russian Federation and myself. But don't you think that this uncertainty uh, is uh, affecting the investment climate in the country? In the last few months, we've seen very large capital outflows from Russia. This is a very good question. I think that we all, both the president and the government and the parliament, must do our utmost to make sure that such uncertainties don't influence our investment climate. What is the difference between up-to-date developed economy and emerging economy? And our economy is emerging so far. That vicissitude of power as to what, who is going to be elected, who is going to be appointed, do not have a very significant impact on the investment climate. For the UK, what is the difference who is going to become the prime minister or for the United States who is going to be the next president? Their investment climate, the, currency, the strength of their currency depends to a lesser extent from whether conservatives are going to win or the Labour are going to win, Republicans or Dem Democrats. But this is an important question for investors in Russia. Yes, for us it is important. Yes, I'm not going to argue with this one. Is it possible that both yourself and Vladimir Putin could stand for the presidency in the elections next year? Well, I think that it is hard to imagine, for one reason at least. The thing is that Vladimir Putin and myself, and Vladimir Putin is my colleague as an old and an old friend, we represent to a large extent the same political force and therefore competition between us may be detrimental to those tasks and goals that we've been implementing in recent years. Therefore, I think this would not be the best scenario for our country and for this specific situation. But do you not think that this kind of competition could be very good for the development of democracy in Russia? Open uh, competition is always good. <laughs> but why can't we have that kind of competition in Russia? Well, I've just told you the goal of participating in the elections is not, you know, to uh, facilitate the development of free competition, but the goal is to win. You have worked with Vladimir Putin for a very long time, about 20 years, I think. 
once you were his subordinate, now the situation is slightly different. How have your relations changed over that time? On the one hand, our relations have not changed at all because we've known each other for a long time, that's for sure. And we did not start uh, from a situation where one was a subordinate and the other was the boss. We, When we started, we were equal. We both worked as advisors to the chairman of, the, of uh, St. Petersburg, then Leningrad, um, legislative assembly, uh, the the would-be mayor of St. Petersburg, uh, Sapchak. Then I worked in his office. Then I worked in the government. Now Vladimir Putin works as the chairman of the government, the prime minister, who, whose candidacy I introduced uh, in the parliament. So nothing has changed on that front because we change, and I won't uh, conceal it from you that any post uh, directly influences. Uh, a person, a personality, and the post of the president changes a lot in your perception of life. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to work. And of course, this also has a bearing on some nuances of our relations, and that's good, that's normal. So how does your perception of life change as president? I'm not going to... Uh, say something supernatural here. If I say that if you work as a president, it means that you will bear the highest responsibility and you have to work in constant tension. In any other position in which I worked, I had some moments or days when I could switch off my phone and relax, do, go in for sports and do other things. And I knew that even if they don't find me, don't find me, nothing will happen. And it is entirely different for the president. You shall always be able to find the president. But in recent months, a lot of people have had the impression that there's growing disagreements between the two of you. Is there tension in the tandem, in the relationship between the two of you? Well, I don't think that differences between us are becoming deeper, but uh, I also spoke on this topic, topic before. Vladimir Putin and myself are different people. We have the same educational background. We graduated from uh, the law school of St. Petersburg University, and in, from, in that respect, our outlook is quite similar. and. After that, we had uh, rather different uh, paths in this life. Every person has a certain set of, um, uh, of certain set of uh, ideas. We attain goals in different ways, and if we see eye to eye to, in all questions, there will be no movement ahead. Any movement ahead is a consequence of overcoming this or that contradiction. But to say that there is a growing gap between us, it would be absolutely inappropriate. But if you do have a second term as president, are you absolutely confident that you can deliver these reforms that you have set out, given that there will be very powerful forces who will be opposing you? I will be blunt with you. If I will work as a president for the second term, which is allowed by our constitution, uh, of course I will do whatever it takes uh, to implement the declared objectives, to modernize our economy, to modernize our society, including its political system. I'm not sure I will uh, complete this whole task, but I would like to see to it that happens. Mr. President, in 10 years' time, what sort of country would you like Russia to be? Can you describe the country that you want Russia to become? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. I would like to see to you that Russia in 10 years would be a successful country with a successful and uh, well-secured people would live, which doesn't imply that in 10 years we'll attain all the possible advantages, uh, achievements, but uh, nevertheless, I'd like to see to it that over 10 years we would substantially raise the standards of life. They have changed over the past 10 years, too. I can recall what happened in the late 90s, whatever they say. Now it's better. The standards of life are higher. Wages and salaries are higher. The rights are better guaranteed, but still they are not sufficient. And don't 
correspond to the level of such a state as Russia is. Therefore, raising the standards of life, improvement of life uh, conditions of our people, that's the most important thing I need to do. And somebody else who will be in the office as the president then. Second, Russia must be a strong state having all the <coughs> signs of uh, the country which is capable of protecting its interest internationally and the permanent member state of the Security Council, the country which other countries could rely on, perhaps. And third, I would like to see to it that Russia be a modern country, a leader of growth in the broadest sense of this word. President Dmitry Medvedev, thank you very much indeed. Спасибо.